Hello, my name is Kyle Pugh with Webucator. During this video, I'll be walking you through how we can create dynamic form controls in an Excel form using Visual Basic or VBA. This video is based on a blog post provided by Andy Pope. I'd like to thank Andy for allowing us to create this video and to share it with you. For the full blog post, feel free to visit Andy's blog at the URL provided below. So here I am inside of Microsoft Excel. I've created an Excel document it's called Colors, uh, and inside of the Visual Basic project of this document, I've created a couple of forms that I'm going to show off to you here in a moment. What I'm going to demonstrate to you here is based off of Andy's blog that I mentioned earlier, we're going to see how we can take two approaches to building an Excel VBA form. We can do it purely through design, jump into the Visual Basic environment and build our form control by control. But that really relies on us to not only build the controls but to build the form, but also to write each little bit of code for all of the controls on our form. Now this is a, a pretty common approach. You design the form, you build the controls, and then you start placing the code onto those controls. But you get a very large form with lots of controls on it, you're perhaps going to be writing a lot of the same code over and over again just to accommodate different controls. This is one approach. The second approach, and this is the one that Andy recommends to us based on his blog post, is to not just design all of it, but to get some of the design work and some of the code generation to happen for us at runtime. This is going to cut back on the amount of design time that we need to put into the form, but it's going to create also a much more dynamic environment for us. So let's take a look at what I got set up here. The example that I have is based off of Andy's blog, um, but I have uh, cut back a little bit on it, and you're not going to see as many controls on this example here as you would see if you download the Excel file that Andy uh, provides on, on the blog. But I'm going to open up my environment here. Shortcut key for us, if we press Alt F11, uh, this will launch the Visual Basic Editor. Here we go, Alt F11. So inside of this environment, I've got two forms that I've set up here. I've got one called FRM Colors and one called FRM Colors underscore two. I'm going to use these to show off both of these techniques that we can use to generate the forms. The first one, FRM Colors, I'll give that a double click over here on the left hand side. This is going to be a form that was gener generated all by me. I designed it, I, I built the controls, I dropped them on this form, right, using the Excel tools within the Visual Basic Editor. But it was all designed. Now it's up to me to now take these buttons, the red, green, and blue buttons, and to start to generate the code. Whatever I want to have happen when somebody clicks on one of these buttons. So here's the big picture. I click on the red button, it's now going to change the color of the large white box on the right hand side. I click on the green one, it changes that white box to green, I click on the blue one, it changes the box to blue, okay, and so on. Now in this example again, I've watered it down a little bit, I've only got three controls, okay, just for the demonstration of, of this, this demo, this video here. Again, Andy, Andy's uh, document that you can download, an Excel document, has, ooh, I think it's 50 plus controls out there. So you can imagine you've got a form that's got 50 plus controls on it. You're going to be there for a while generating each little bit of code for each of those buttons. Even though they do roughly the same thing, just with a little bit of variation to them, a different color. So here's how you would do it. I've created the form. Now I want to drop the code onto these three little buttons. So I'm going to double click on my red one. This will take me into the code behind for this button. And here I can see that I've got a private sub procedure named after my button, CMD red, uh, with the click event. So now I'm going to create the code that's going to change the color of that larger white box based on the click of this button. So one little line, it's nothing huge, but again, 50 plus of these buttons, now you've got 50 plus lines of code that do roughly the same thing. 
here, I'm going to make reference to the form utilizing the keyword of me. And I'm going to get into the, that control. This is the larger white box that was on the right hand side of the form. It's called TXT current color. And what do I want to do with that? I want to get into its back color or its, its interior fill color. Now, what do I want to do with that? I want to make that equal to the color of the CMD red control back color. There we have it. So it's not a huge amount of code, but a line in here that I'm going to now have to generate for each of my buttons. Reference the form, the specific control in that form, its back color property, and make it equal to something. In this case, the back color of the button that you clicked on. Now, let me accomplish this for my two other buttons. So I'm going to go back and double click on FRM colors. Now I'm going to double click on the green button. This will take me into the click event, the code for the green button. And now just to make it a little bit more efficient for me, I'm going to paste in that same code that I used earlier, but now I'm going to make reference to the green button. And I'm going to do this one more time back to form colors, get my blue button, and I'll paste in that code and just change the reference to my blue button. So once again, only three little controls here, but imagine 50 plus controls, 100 plus controls, and now you're having to generate that code for each of these buttons. But not only that, it's not just about writing the code, but it's also about designing the form, placing those controls out there making them look good, placing 50 plus, 100 plus buttons out there on your form, designing all of those essentially by hand. So once again, this is one method. Let's take a look at it work. I'm going to open up my FRM colors form and I'll hit the play button there at the top of the screen. And there's my form. I click on the red button, changes the background color of this box on the right to red, green, blue, and so on. So I got a nice little operating form here. But this approach is perhaps not very efficient. From a programming standpoint and a design standpoint, I'm going to be here a while generating, creating this form, and creating the code. So let's take a look at the second approach. During this approach, we're going to get into a bit more code, but in doing so, we're going to create a much more dynamic, a much more efficient way to create our forms. So I'm going to close this form. I'm now going to open up the second form that I have there called FRM underscore colors. And you're going to notice something right away that there's no buttons on this form. I don't have the red, green, and blue buttons like the prior form had. Well, I could use the toolbox to start generating those buttons. But once again, you got 50 plus of these buttons out there. I don't want to have to do that individually each button. So we're going to take a look at how we can create an array of controls at runtime and associate an event with those buttons that we'll be creating. So we're going to do just a little bit of code here. I need to get into the code of the form. So I'm going to double click the form itself. This will take me to the code behind. Now it takes me into the click event because that's what I did to get to the code was click on the form. I'm going to change the click. I'm going to go from click here in the top right corner. I'm going to go to initialize. I want to say when the form is initialized, somebody launches the form or it runs the macro, the procedure. It then runs a little bit of code. And I'm going to do a few things here. I'm going to have the initialize uh, create a few variables. Uh, it's then going to create a loop that creates all the controls for this form. So I don't really need to click anymore. I'm just going to delete those two little lines, that stub of, of code that they put in there for me. And I'm going to jump into my user form initialize event. And first, I'm going to create a couple of variables. My first variable is going to be reference to the various controls, button controls, that I'm going to create. And I'm going to call this control command, and it's going to be of type control. So remember, we need to be able to create all the buttons that are going to go on our form. Now, a very common way to get something to repeat multiple times within our code is by utilizing a loop. So I'm going to set up 
a variable called i, and this is going to be just an integer uh, of type. And I'm going to use this within a for loop to iterate through an array that I'm going to create, uh, but ultimately it's going to create so many buttons for us. So we'll come back to that i variable here in a moment. The next thing I'm going to create here is another variable. I'm going to call it colors, but I'm going to treat this as an array, and specifically as a multi-dimensional array that's going to hold string values. Now I do want to point out that instead of Andy's blog post, he does make reference to colors in a slightly different way than I'm doing here. Uh, Andy references cells within a worksheet, a group of cells of all different colors, and then utilizing those inside of the code. Here I'm going to approach it slightly different. I'm going to place it all inside of the code itself, create an array that's going to hold two things. It's going to hold the button name, like red, green, blue, purple, orange, and so on. And it's also going to hold the color value that I'll use to change the colors of the controls. And I'll do it inside of an array. Both approaches, totally legit. Uh, just in this case, it's, it's all going to be driven through code. And I'm going to create one more variable here. I'm just going to call this one left. This will be another integer. But this is going to help me line the buttons up. Just where's the button at as far as the left hand side of the screen or the form. So now I'm going to start to populate these. I'm going to give them some values that we're now going to use. All right, so not much going on in here. I've just given the left a value of six. Hey, it's just six increments off of the left hand side of the form. This will help me place the buttons. And now I've started to populate this multi-dimensional array with two things. Uh, the first row contains names, they're just strings. These are where I'm gonna call the buttons. And then the second row contains the uh, color values that I'm gonna use to change the color of the boxes, the buttons themselves, and that white box that ultimately our buttons will change. So now that I've created my variables, my next step here is I'm gonna create an array that will now set these buttons up on my form. Let's try this out. So I'm gonna create a for loop. We'll say, um, I'm gonna use that i that I created earlier for i equals zero, and I wanna loop however many times I have buttons. In this case, I created an array that's gonna hold reference to the names of these buttons, red, green, and blue. So here I'm gonna say it's gonna loop uh, zero to the U bound of the array, in this case, the array called colors. <clears throat> and I'm gonna subtract one from that. Uh, VB uh, arrays are zero based arrays and I wanna make sure that I don't go out of bounds of that array. And I'm going to say, uh, go to the next I, and that'll become my loop. Now, once again, the loop's gonna do a few things for me. One, I want to programmatically create these buttons. So that'll be the first thing I do, is I'm gonna make a reference to that control command variable that I created earlier. And this is gonna be equal to the controls that I'm gonna create, that I'll add to the form. And what type of controls am I adding to the form? Well, these are gonna be command button controls that I'm going to add. All right, and let's see what color are these, uh, are get, or whether the names of these buttons gonna be. Uh, well, I'll use that array that I created earlier. We'll get into the first row, uh, and we'll use I to increment through the first row of this multi-dimensional array called colors. So when it's at the uh, first position or the zero index position, we'll get red. Uh, and then when it loops again, we'll get green and then blue. And, and so I'm taking advantage of, of an array. And I wanna make sure that these controls, they are visible. So I'm gonna say true within the last argument of the add method. All right, so now I'm starting to create my controls. But now I'm gonna use a with statement here to start to change some of the, oops, let's do that right here to change some of the attributes or properties of each of these controls that I'm gonna create here. I love the uh, with statement, the little kind of shorthand to be able to make reference to the same control or the same object, but then get into multiple properties. 
So I'm going to say, let's get into the left. I'm going to make that equal to that left variable that I created earlier. We're going to put the top at uh, about 24. And I'm going to change the width and height. Let's get some values in there. Then we'll say this is going to be 42. And oops, let's change that. Let's get my period in front of there. And let's see, what else am I going to do here? I'm going to change the height. We'll make that 36. Now, once again, I'll get into the visible. We'll make sure that that is absolutely set to true. And then one more here. We're going to change the back color of the control. And let's see, it's not coming up my IntelliSense there for some reason, so I'm just going to make sure that I do capitalize those letters properly. And the colors that I want to be able to reference here are kept inside of that array. So I'll just use that I value once again to now increment through the second row of my multi-dimensional array. And let's see, one last thing I'm going to do here outside of that in width, each time this thing loops, I want to make sure I put the buttons in the proper spot. So I'm now going to change the value of left to add 54 to it. Uh, and now, now these buttons will gradually go on a horizontal line for me. If we're going to make multiple rows, multiple columns inside of here, then I'm going to have to accommodate not just the left, but perhaps also the top position within each of the rows. So I've got just a little bit of the code here. I've got just a little bit more I need to do to really complete this. But let's see what happens right now if I go ahead and run this. Again, this is all generated through code now. We're creating buttons and we're laying them out on the form. So I'm gonna go back to my FRM colors, underscore two on the left-hand side. I'll give that a double click. And now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the play button there at the top of the screen. And here's my form. So what didn't have buttons before, now have buttons all generated through code. Now I'm not complete yet. If I click on those buttons, they don't have any code tied to the buttons, so no click event. Well, that's what we're gonna accomplish next year. So I'm gonna close this form, get back to my code. Uh, this time, we're gonna get away from the form itself, and we're gonna take a look at creating a class, and what, what's called a class module inside of our Visual Basic Projects of Excel. This cl class module is really gonna do one thing for us. It's gonna create the event that will then tie to the buttons that we just created here within that initialize event of the form. So I'm gonna create the class module. I'm gonna go up to my insert menu, top of my screen. I'm gonna go down to class module. And right off the bat, I'm gonna change the name of this class module just inside the properties window. Let's just call this, ooh, let's see, let's call it color events. All right, hit my enter key, and I've now changed the name of that class module I've just created. Now, this is just going to be a little bit of code. Uh, one, I'm going to bring in option explicit. Make sure that I am declaring my variables before I use them. So let's put that in there. Uh, and now I'm going to create a public variable here that's going to act as the object or the event that I want to be able to tie to my buttons. This is gonna be public. And it's gonna use a keyword here called with events. This is gonna allow us to create this variable here uh, and then associate the events within this variable that we can then tie back to those buttons that we just created uh, in the previous, uh, previous code. And I'm gonna call this uh, command events. And this is gonna be of type MS forms and it's going to be a command button. All right, so now I'm going to create the actual event. This is going to be a private sub, and we'll call this CMD events once again, capital C events, and we'll do the uh, click event for this one. All right, and we'll end that there. Now here's the one little line. This is going to be very similar to the first example kind of the more efficient example here, but now I'm just gonna write it once. So I'm gonna make reference to my form called colors underscore two, and I wanna get back into that control txt current color, and we're gonna get into the back color property, and what am I gonna make that equal to? Well, I'm gonna make it equal to cmd events 
that I created earlier, the width events section, to its back color. There we have it. Let's clean that up. So now that I've got this class or this object, I'm now going to tie it back to those buttons within that loop that we created earlier. So let me get back to the prior code. I'll double click my frm colors underscore two. I'm going to double click my form to get back into the code. And right above the code, I'm going to make reference to that object that I just created, that class that I just created. So I'm going to create a variable here. We'll call this a command array. And this is going to be of type uh, color events. Remember creating that just a moment ago? We had the color events class. So now I'm making an array of those of those classes, of those objects. So now that I've got this new array, I'm going to hop back down into my loop that I created earlier. Let's just go right below that last line of left equals left plus 54. And now I'm going to start to tie that class to these controls, these buttons that I've created here. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to redim and preserve the uh, CMD array. Uh, this is the, the array that I'm, I've just created. And I'm going to put the size of the control or the I value that I have in there right now. So now I'm going to set, let's move that up a little bit. I'm going to set the CMD array, that current position of I, whatever that happens to be at the time, 0, 1, or 2, to CMD events. And I'm going to make that equal to the control underscore command that I created earlier. So now we've got this initialize event of our form that does the creation and layout of our buttons. And it also ties the event to each of those buttons to our CTL command button that we've created. And we're tying that event to it. That's it. I didn't have to create the buttons. I don't have to write each individual little bit line of code for each of the buttons. But now this is all happening at runtime programmatically all through our code. So let's try this out. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my FRM colors underscore two. I'll give that a double click. And I'm going to go ahead and run my form. There's my three little buttons like we saw before. But now, click on red. It runs that click event, which comes from the class that we created, which is now tied to that button programmatically. Hit the green, hit the blue, and I'm done. You can compound this. You take a look at Andy's blog, and he's got one out there with like 50 plus controls, multiple rows, multiple columns, but it's all generated at runtime. So as you saw, with just a little bit of Visual Basic within our Excel forms, we can create a much more dynamic and efficient experience for us. Once again, I'd like to thank Andy for allowing us to borrow from his blog post and to be able to create this video for your enjoyment. Feel free to jump out to Andy's blog at the URL below for more information and tips and tricks on utilizing Visual Basic within Excel.